the wind it doesn't blow any of this stuff into the river while I'm working here. Like that. But anyway, oh, there's the clip. That clip can just go onto the side there of that hole. That's not a really big shrimp, but it's certainly a shrimp that a, uh, a yellow belly would take. Next time I come here, this is where I'm gonna fish. Anyhow, half an hour later and it's time to check the shrimp nets again. <laughs> I found a new fishing spot that I'm gonna fish just downstream a little bit next time I come. Thanks to my deeper, it's a nice little spot. I've got the rods in the car and the worms in the esky. I was gonna actually fish this afternoon, but I don't know whether I can sit there and drown baiting this wind. It'll drive me absolutely mad. I don't know whether I've got the patience. It's quite a treat. Whoa, and a lot of shrimp in there. Look at them all. They're all small. There's a few in there that'll do for bait, but they're not the big ones that I was hoping for. Probably been about 45 minutes at a guess. One, two, three, three. Most of them are a bit small. I'll put them in. I dropped one down here. He made a courageous escape. I'll put him back in the river. He's a bit small. I'm trying to just get there. See, they're not very big. You, you'll catch redfin three inches long on them. They love them. But if you want the bigger yellow belly, you sort of want bigger shrimp than that. But you, can, you know, you can always put two or three on a hook. They're too small, them ones. It's any wonder my worms were just getting hacked to bits the other night. Have a look how many bloody shrimp are in here. <sighs> in probably not even an hour, probably 45 minutes, I reckon I've caught probably 15, 20 shrimp in there then. My God, the flies are insane. Flies are always a problem here in Australia, but I reckon they're worse today than ever before. Wow, look at that. There's only like, that other net had heaps of shrimp in it. This one's only got one. I can see two. Isn't that amazing? You can get like about 20 in one net and just one or two in the other. I'll put him in the, uh, there's three in there actually. I'll put him in. Right. That's bizarre. I wonder if it's because that net down there is closer to a few branches and stuff. Whereas this one here is uh, sort of out in the open in the mud flat. I wonder if I just move it down here near these branches, if that'll help. Let's put in amongst all these snags. You can see leaves and stuff under the water here, look. Yeah. I reckon that's going to be a better option. Sitting on top of a snag, I think. I thought it was just really shallow just there. Yeah, I reckon that's a better option. Put it in there. Let's have a look and see what we've got so far. Oh, there's quite a few kicking around in there. There's probably 10 or 15 in there already. As I've said a few times, they're not huge, but a lot of them are okay size for bait. While I leave the nets in up there, I've come downstream about two or three kilometers to where the stream is, or the creek is much wider and quite a bit deeper, just to drown some bait and see if I can catch a fish. I'll sit here for about an hour, maybe even an hour and a half, see how I go before I go up and check the nets again. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Oh, that was a good bite. I missed the bloody thing. Bugger it, that was a real good bite. Please come back. That was a good fish bite. Oh, so hard to see whether you're getting a bite in this wind. The whole stick's blowing over. <laughs> Righto folks, I've been sitting here for well over an hour, close to an hour and a half. I've had one bite on that rod there. It was a really good bite, but I missed it. Other than that, nothing. <laughs> Anyhow, these nets, these shrimp nets will have been in close to two hours by the time I go and check them. 
in the words of some Italian dude, it's time of the check of the nets. <laughs> right, over here first. Your bucket still there? I actually put my bucket there, I left it there while I was gone. The chances of someone finding it and then like stealing it are pretty low. Where I am here, over near Katamatite, it's not very popular. I can sit here all day and no one really drives past. So if someone did, the chances of them coming down to the river are, are pretty low in this particular spot when there's so many other spots. And if they did, the chances of them being nasty enough to steal somebody else's equipment are even lower again. You know, there's some bad people in society, but most of them are good. Righto. Let's check this net. I can hear a lot of splashing and jumping in there. Oh yes, I can see some good sized shrimp too. Some better ones. He's not a bad bait shrimp. One, two, three. Four, five. Oh, look at them all. Six, seven. That's a minnow. You can go back in the creek. Ah, it's a yabby, it's got me finger. See the one in there. <laughs> Eight, nine, ten. Minnow be gone. He's actually a very good bait yabby. Look at this. They've been in a good two hours. They're not bad sized bait. That one's a bit small. They're not bad sized bait shrimps. They're certainly big enough to put on a hook. I know if I was going over to Lake Nilakuti, I'd certainly be using them. Another little minnow. That shrimp's a bit small. Now, I kind of lost count there, but I put about probably 10 or 15 shrimp into the bucket then. You beauty. Dad's going to be stoked. <laughs> Moving the net just into there, closer to the bank, closer to the snags and the foliage, has uh, turned out to be a good move. Let's go check the other one. Now in anticipation, I'll open it now. If you're ever keeping shrimp, it's important that you have a lid of some kind over whatever you're keeping them in because they will jump straight up and straight out. I've had a bit of a roll reversal here. This one caught heaps last time and that one caught only three or four. This time this one's only got three or four. One of us too small. Two, three. Put this little bloke back. Oh, yeah. Looking great. Might get a photo of him. There's a lot of shrimp in there. And they're all alive, every single one of them, thanks to the aerator. I can just about guarantee you right now that without that aerator, they would all be dead. I find you normally half an hour maximum in a bucket of water, and then the oxygen's too low and they all die. I might move this net just down here somewhere around these branches, I think. What about just in here, beside this big gum tree? Try that. We've just got to secure the float so that the wind can't blow it away. Oh yuck, what a yucky scene. I kid you not, when I lifted them branches off, something snapped off and went straight up into me mouth. Oh, didn't just go in the mouth. <coughs> that went down the throat. Straight up me mouth and down me throat. Oh dear, I'm gonna have a drink before I check these nets. 
gonna wash that bit of gum leaf or whatever it was straight down the hatch. <coughs> oh my god, let's try that again. If my arms are waving everywhere, it's the bloody flies. They're driving me insane. Let's try that again. <coughs> my eyes are still watering. I don't know what it was. All I did was lift the leaves off. Something shot up straight in my mouth and straight down my throat. I just went and had a huge big drink of Pepsi Max. And I could feel something going down my throat. I'd be a gum, uh, one of those seeds off one of these gum leaves or something. I don't know. Pretty horrible experience. <laughs> I haven't gagged that much since I ate a carp. All right, what have we got? There's a bit of a yabby in there again. That's a, I've got to be first big shrimp. My first big shrimp. I've caught about 60 shrimp and I finally caught a good one. <laughs> All right, what have we got here? One. There's a better one. Look at that. He might even fail the nose test. Let's see. That can't be fun. Look at the bottom of my nose. Ah! Ah! <laughs> Ow! It's not that bad now. At first it was a bit, uh, a bit tough. He's a nice shrimp. Oh, see, now my eyes are watering even more. He's quite a nice shrimp. He's perfect bait size. 60 of them would have been ideal. But anyway. These smaller ones will still work. Oh dear, stupid thing to do. Um, here we go. When you're fishing, it's a process of elimination. You start with those really big shrimps, then you start moving down to this size, until you get down to the smallest ones. And there's a couple of minnows in there. I'll get the bait out, get the minnows out, pack the net up. I wonder if this new spot just here will produce the goods. Remember, I moved this net last time, because I was catching fish, heaps of shrimp on me, and then it stopped. So I moved it to a new spot. There's one on top. <laughs> I've got one on the top. Where'd he go? Where'd he go? I don't even know where he went. There he is. Right. What's in here? Not much. This net's been disappointing again. It hasn't got a hole in it, has it? Only one shrimp and it was on the top of the net. Nothing, not even a single... Oh, there's one little weeny one in the net and that's it. It's amazing how one net can catch so many and the other one doesn't catch any. Just had a phone call from Brett Corker. For anybody wondering, Brett and I will be teeing up on cod opening again this year. Like we do most years. Yeah, baby. Look at all them shrimpies. He eats a shrimp and a yabby. <laughs> I'll stick the GoPro in there. Put them all. Right, here, folks, that's it from me. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope you've learned a few things about how to catch shrimp and how to keep them alive. Remember, shrimp are very hard to keep alive, they need oxygen in the water, which is why they've got a little aerator like that. Right, hey, folks, thanks for watching. If you've liked this video, give me a thumbs up. Why not hit the subscribe button, and I'll see you in my next video.